Villains are very important to every show. In fact, I would go far enough to say they're the most important part of a show, in my opinion, because they make the show. They put your protagonist through the adversities and cause them to grow, making you love your protagonist even more. What makes a good villain? <laughs> The best way to show you what makes a good villain is to give you two examples of great villains and why they're great villains. So you, I'm not going to make you guys wait too long. The two villains that I'm going to use are Pain and Do Flamingo from Naruto and One Piece, respectfully. Sorry. <laughs> Respectively. <laughs> Starting with Pain, the introduction of Pain to Naruto as the leader of the Akatsuki was crazy. His first scene already when he summoned the Akatsuki. Whenever you heard the sound of his voice, you just knew that this guy is going to be hard. So we didn't know much about him initially. We just knew him as the leader of Akatsuki. But when he came out and we started to learn more about him, we started to see why it makes sense why fans love him so much. First of all, he's a direct parallel to Naruto. He's like Naruto gone bad. He's like Obito, but better. He also had like a direct connection to the protagonist, which gives fans a direct link to connect him with they shared the same teacher as well as he had a heavy blow that made fans put attention to him him killing jiraira who was his sensei and taught him how to do jitsu to save his life i mean there's no way something like that will happen that wouldn't get viewers engaged and excited to see more about him then you dive down to his motivation to his history what made him so much the way he was you learn a little bit about his past, how his family was killed, how his land was torn into war by two bigger countries. And when you start to feel like, oh, this guy is making sense. That's how you know that this person is a good villain. There's some substance to the character. There's dimensions, there's layers to the character. At some point, you feel like you can get behind the character. There are some people that even believe pain was right throughout. Like nobody blamed him for what he did. It was just kind of thing of, this is something that I have to do based off where I came from and the things that I experienced. And to top it off, he was a very formidable foe. He landed in Konoha and was wiping everybody left, right and center, giving them their asses, killed off Kakashi. Oh shit, I should have said spoiler warning. But I mean, if you haven't watched Naruto at this point, what are you doing with your life? And why are you watching this video? Anyway, he killed off Kakashi, wiped out the whole town messed everything up so he's a formidable foe seeing naruto go through the challenges that he went through to beat him makes him such a good villain and when he got defeated and thrown out of the story yes it was a big moment for naruto fans and naruto but it kind of left a sour feeling in my mouth because we were not gonna see more of him later on and he was so loved and ingrained into people's hearts at that point that it was just bittersweet and that's what makes him a, gr a great character and then Doflamingo from One Piece he's a different sort of villain I would say he's more of a pure evil villain the embodiment of evil he was just born to cause havoc but then if you look at the man's character design that checks all the boxes my man is dripping all the time D-R-I-P drip raining even on sunny days that's Doflamingo that's one reason why people gravitate towards the character. When you see that pink feather coat, I never thought I would love someone wearing a pink feather coat till I saw the man. So he checks all the boxes for physical appearance, demeanor, and personality. But then he also has a very amazing backstory. Um, seeing what his family went through, seeing his dad deciding to lose the bread to come back and live with the peasants, I would be cheesed too. His dad being so naive and so crazy is the reason why Doflamingo is the way he is. Because imagine, you're living good, you're living life as a celestial, getting lobster fed to you, everything great. One moment, your dad just wakes up and like, I want to live like regular people. I want to make sure everything is good. Let's go down and live with the peasants. And then you live with the peasants and the peasants don't accept you. They torture you. They, your mom dies on the road. They hang you throw arrows at you you know you're crying your brother's crying and you look at your dad and you're like what a waste of a man and this is somebody that i'm supposed to look at look up to ain't no way ain't no way and then you're further down the line 
Ode uses Trafalgar Law, who already was a beloved character at that point. Instead of Naruto to pain, he used Trafalgar Law to kind of connect us more with um, Do Flamingo and the killing of his brother, who was the mentor and father figure of Trafalgar Law, saved his life was a pivotal moment in Do Flamingo's character that made people, made fans see, okay, this guy is about the shit. And yeah, some people hated him for that. And the sadistic guys loved him for that. Well, maybe you guys would know what I would choose, but <laughs> killing your brother is tight. But then in the storyline, how he's deep rooted in everything. His, they mean, they call him the Joker. Um, his operation to what he did with Dress Rosa making the king a puppet and killing his citizens, turning everybody into toys that makes you forget about you. In the surface, everything looked jolly, but everybody was living like hell. And he also had the mafia boss feeling because of his family. It's just one of those characters that you just cannot afford to not like. He is someone that when you look at or he, when he's on your screen, you're engaged. You want to know more about him. You want to know why he's doing these things. He seemed to be deep rooted in the history of the world. He seems to have his hands in every single place. And that is why, you know, he makes such a great villain. When looking at these two characters or these two villains, there are things you can get behind. You can maintain a connection with them. You could see that they have a purpose. You could understand where they are coming from and they're not one dimensional. Layers, my brother. Layers. When a character has all these qualities, it makes you a great character. Better yet, a great villain. And it concludes my video of what makes villains great. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. See you in the next video. Peace.